Hello and welcome back to Just a Book. <laughs> I'm Sergio and we're going to go through The Lost Thing by Sean Tan. It's a really good book. Most schools and children would have come across this book, uh, in England at least, uh, because it is two things actually, because it is very simple to read and also because the illustrations and the storyline is very easy to follow. So it's quite a... Um, an accessible book to most ages, I'd probably say from seven and up. It's got some uh, high vocabulary, especially in the the background images, which we'll, we'll see in a moment, um, which aren't really me meant to be read, however, are there, which also poses a very interesting question. But um, yeah, probably around six, seven, this book is quite accessible and children love it. It's very illustrative. It's got lots of pictures, very visual. Lots of colours going on and lots of really interesting things that, that students can talk about. Um, it's a book about, I think, two things mainly. About the protagonist and his own uh, understanding two things that are lost within himself. So he finds this object and how he relates this object is, one can say, how he relates to his own object as being his own self, his own particularities, his own differences. Um, and then the next part of this book, which I think is quite interesting, is how society, his family, the community around him also relate to things that are different, a bit um, a bit strange, out of the ordinary. So it's, it's real commentary on how a person's own development in themselves uh, and how a, a relationship they have with themselves and their own personal development, as well as how society influences that. So it's quite a sophisticated book, I'd say. Um, yeah, quite sophisticated, presented in a very simple way. And that's why I love children's books. There really are, and I think increasingly movies and books are getting more and more multi-layered, which you can access uh, the older you get. It's probably been like that all most of the time. But I, I really know in, in reading children's books to my class, it's a very um, interesting thing to note the things you pick up on the older you get. And also the, the things that you can start to understand the older you get. Um, yeah, the, the different ideas and perspectives come more more illuminate, illuminated the older you get. So it's very good. I think The Simpsons is a good example of that, actually. The Simpsons can be accessed on many different levels. So, um, yeah. All right, let's begin. Um, the Lost Thing by Sean Tan. Very nice uh, cover. You have this, uh, you know, this background which is going to carry the way through the whole book. And you have this object here, which is The Lost Thing. Um, and this little sign here that will come up from time to time. And, and students will notice this. They will notice that this sign presents itself um, a lot throughout the, throughout the book. All right, let's go. Uh, so first off, we see uh, this uh, page. It's, it's almost like a collage. It's been the story and pictures have been almost either scratched out or, or pasted on these newspapers. A uh, newspaper in itself is a lost thing, or it could be old books, old pages of books that once forgotten. You zoom into a lot of this language and it's just, I mean, the author must have chosen chosen what words pop out for what reasons I'm, I'm still trying to understand. But um, uh, yeah, it's just quite, quite an interesting thing to note. Um, all these illustrations and drawings, it's a whole new level. It's a whole new level. In a, in a one way, you can say that these snippets of information and, da and data, scientific, mathematical, are a sort of lost pieces of language, either lost uh, and now taken as, as fact and the, the, the particulars are lost to us, or lost because they're no longer needed or, uh, yeah, no longer needed. So, um, yeah, just checking to see if it's recording. All right, let me zoom out and let's read this. So you want to hear a story? Well, I used to know a whole lot of pretty interesting ones. Some of them so funny, you'd laugh yourself unconscious. Others so terrible, you'd never want to repeat them. But I can't remember any of those. So I'll just tell you about the time I found that lost thing. This all happened a few summers ago, one rather ordinary day by the beach. Not much was going on. I was, as usual, 
working tirelessly on my bottle top collection and stopped to look up for no particular reason. That's when I first saw the thing. It's a nice little um, introduction there. It's a very ordinary scene. You get an idea that the character, the personality is ordinary in himself. He doesn't seem to take things too seriously or too excitable. Uh, what does he say? Uh, I was, as usual, walking tirelessly, working tirelessly in my bottle top collection and stopped to look up for no particular reason on a rather ordinary day. So the author's trying to make us recognize that the, this this life and this uh, this scene and this, this life is something which is just ordinary, unspecial. Uh, and perhaps it's something that people can relate to. Not so much children. I think children think their lives are incredibly special and unique. Um, but the older you get, things, at least for me, seem much more ordinary and unspecial, uncomplicated. We can see here, uh, beautiful, this is going to come up a lot in this book. It's really wonderful to see. Uh, these little snippets of time. Uh, that's how I to, to talk to the children about it. Uh, sometimes time and insight into the environment. Um, especially clouds passing and moving and changing different shapes, they all come through. It's kind of like a prison cell. You have these guarded gates and and um, you're looking at this very small view. Here we have uh, the character, the protagonist, which, interestingly enough, from the reading, I get the idea that he is quite bored. He's quite, uh, you know, just an everyday guy, but he seems to be very happy doing his bottle top collection. We can see pictures here. I would ask, uh, I ask students, you know, what, what are these pictures telling you as a theme? Is it something positive or negative, good or bad? And they would say uh, bad. And I would say, oh, why is that? Um, and you can see clear words in bold, do not. It's a cancel sign. Uh, red, these red and white uh, pictures all happening here. And it's a, a comment, I think, on restrictions and hazards and uh i say hazards because it says has has shin has shin which i'm assuming is a language called hazard i don't know but there's all these restrictions and boundaries in society in the society that society that he lives in we have this arrow this is the particular one here in the front page but we have this arrow here as well so kids children will notice that uh again i love this comma phrase over here i was as usual working tiredly tirelessly and that's a nice really lovely um, feature that children can start implementing in their writing I don't know if it's an embedded clause I don't I don't know embedded clause hmm. but they can start to put that into their writing and and just give a bit of punch and detail to their characters it's so often I say to children start um, adding detail to these characters bring personality out I usually do this at year four age so this is eight nine uh, where we look at personality um, in year three I would talk about uh, the senses more often so what do they see what do they feel what do they think what do they touch uh, what do they smell what do they taste in year four I would then add on to what kind of person they are and how does this influence how can you tell me this kind of person uh, and how does this person influence the environment around them so that's something I think which year fours and up have more success at doing. Um, I must have stared at it for a while. I mean, it had a really weird look about it. A sad, lost sort of look. Nobody else seemed to notice it was there. Too busy doing beach stuff, I guess. Naturally, I was intrigued. I decided to investigate. Sure didn't do much. It just sat there. Let me go in. It just sat there, looking out of place. I was baffled. Lots of children stop here and they ask, what does that baffled word mean? It's quite a nice word, it pops out baffled. But you can see here, um, and I think this is what happens with the arrows before, you have these mixed messages. You have arrows pointing in different directions all the time. And it doesn't tell you, there's no clear um, way. It, set, it sets a sort of ambiguous, ambiguous, tone to his life and and the, and the world around him people lost in directions going in different places all the time no clear way to say which way to go you have people here in this horrible industrial it looks like, looks like a ship a horrible industrial setting look at these stairs they just climb to the top 
Um, this looks like the side of a, a big ship. Um, all the people, same umbrellas, sort of distance um, all the time. There's a stop and a go, an arrow pointing down. Um, homogeneous equations. Homogeneous. They have arrows again pointing in different directions. What bottle top is that? Says the book. Electricity. 215. Boil. Yeah, so there's all this stuff here which is just emphasizing industrial, industrial. You know, this is the industrial world uh, in its peak. And there's this thing there sitting, this lost thing, which he's intrigued by. Um, so, yeah, let's find out. Oh, yeah, and, and you can see we have again a cloud snippet, and we have uh, sort of a uh, this is the first sort of glimpse into a comic like presentation of writing. We have these snippets here, and they are uh, very. Uh, they're a feature of comics. You have this, and then this, and then this, and then this. You can see it in um, cartoons and films where it does like these, what are they called, flashes to different scenes. And it's trying to replicate that in the book. And it's a lovely way of presenting information, it really is. <clears throat> it was quite friendly, though, once I started talking to it. I played with the thing for most of the afternoon. It was great fun, yet I couldn't help feeling that something wasn't quite right. As the hours slouched by, it seemed less and less likely that anybody was coming to take the thing home. There was no denying the unhappy truth of the situation. It was lost. Even how he talks is very mechanical in some way. There was no denying the unhappy truth of the situation. It's very clinical. It's a very, like, highbrow, uh, not highbrow, but a very, um, considered engineered type of um, language, I think, anyway. Uh, so he's being influenced by the, by the world around him. You see him trying to communicate with this beast, and he's doing trying to do interesting stuff. It's got interesting things. The way he interacts with it is displayed scientifically. You have these um, dotted lines uh, happening. He's trying to look for things. This the uh, the lost thing is kinematics cinematics the lost thing is is interacting um, with it which is quite a interesting thing the environment is starting to interact with with the lost thing I asked a few people if they had any if they knew anything about it but nobody was very helpful so it goes around and tries to take responsibility you can see why um, no one is really bothered. Everyone's doing, they're all lost in their own thing. All doing, you were, you are here, bam. You have the arrow pointing up and arrow pointing down. Again, those arrows come through. This um, lovely image of the these three businessmen all looking exactly the same. Uh, yeah, just, it's a sad world. And then you have this, a way of presenting time other than the clock. You have the uh, clouds passing as the day passes. It's a really nice technique to show that in every scene, this is what's passing, time is passing. I took the lost thing over to Pete's place. Pete has an opinion on just about anything. Cool, he said. I'm trying to find out who owns it. I told him, I told him, I don't know, man, said Pete. It's pretty weird. Maybe it doesn't belong to anyone. Maybe it doesn't come from anywhere. Some things are like that. He paused for dramatic effect. Just plain lost. So here they are sitting on a um, community um, plot that's all built the same, an estate almost. Every house looks exactly the same, the same colours. It's that uniformed, um, that uniformed presentation which implies a uniformed people you know everyone has to be exactly the same N nothing unordinary can exist or is wanted or is known in these areas it can't if anything is different stands out then it will be noticed you can also see the uh the arrow down here as well pointing the arrow appears itself um yeah yeah, yeah, and here must here's Pete drinking his coffee. He looks different though. He looks different to other people, and I think that's why. Um, well, that, that's possibly possibly why they can be friends. They recognise some sort of difference in each other. And here, the lost thing is is sitting. 
So here we have a, a boy so far, or a man, who's found something different in his world, and he's trying to correct it. He's trying to find a place for it to live, a place for it to go, and who it belongs to. There was nothing left to do but take the thing home with me. I mean, I couldn't just leave it wandering the streets. Plus, I felt kind of sorry for it. My parents didn't really notice it at first. Too busy discussing current events, I guess. Eventually, I had to point it out to them. It, it's felt, uh, its feet are filthy, shrieked Mum. It could have all kinds of strange diseases, warned Dad. Take it back to where you found it, they demanded, both at the same time. It's lost, I said, but they had already started talking about something else. It's a lovely insight now into, into um, the main character's world. We really get to see his, the attitude of his parents to the lost thing. And here is a moment where we can think if this is, I don't think this guy has a, um, his name is never mentioned. The protagonist, if he in himself, it can be a, a um, conversation about him discovering something different in himself and him trying to get rid of it. He's trying to find a place for it at first. Then he, in this scene on the left, on the left page, he says, OK, I need to take it home. I need to bring it. Taking it home is a way of just accepting it and bringing it to his most intimate, intimate setting, bringing it to himself. And he, he comes out to his parents about this lost thing and they didn't notice it at first. It was there all along. It was loud. It, it's, it's obtrusive, but they didn't notice it, you know, and Pete, Pete, no. And the protagonist had to hint to them, hey, look, there's something different going on. Um, there's something and it's over here. And the parents reactions is just horrible. Um, um, and this lovely last sentence, it's lost, I said. But they had already started talking about something else. Lovely uh, comment there about modern society, how quick things go, how disinterested, how disengaged, unengaged people can be, uh, and how things are, fe are fleeting, quite fleeting. There's something you know like that in their house, and they just sort of like, yep, okay, this is it's been said. I'm not going to give it any second thought. I'm not going to open my perspective. I'm not, not going to think about this anymore. This is a nice little zoom in. Lovely picture, lots of real detail. <laughs> this little arrow. Yeah. I hid the thing in our back shed and gave it something to eat once I found out what it liked. It seemed a bit happier then, even though it was still lost. I checked the local paper for any lost pet notices, but only found a lot of good deals and refrigerator repairs. I remember thinking then that Pete was probably right, that some things were just plain lost. In any case, I sure couldn't keep the thing in the shed forever. Mum or Dad would eventually notice it when they came out looking for a hammer or something. It was a real dilemma. I was wondering what to do when a small advertisement on the last page of the paper happened to catch my eye. So we have that solution as a problem, and here's a, here's a bit of a solution. So he opens the thing on this page over here. We He opens a thing on this page, and it's kind of like Pandora's box. All this stuff spills out, and it's exciting, and it's strange, and it's wondrous. And you have this little life bulb, which could be hope, you know, in Pandora's myth. Uh, the more you investigate what's odd or different about you as, uh, individually, the more interesting it can become. Uh, or it can actually go the other way, but that's another story. But the more you sit closer to those particularities and those odd things about you, the more you learn about uh, yourself and the more interesting and um, wonderful things can come from it. And I think this picture here is a really good symbol of that. You're opening this beast, this un this lost, this unwanted thing. And what do you see is all this incredible stuff, these beautiful mechanics um, on different pressures and times uh, inside of it, uh, which I think is a very important teaching, actually. So he tries to hide it in the shed, but he knows that his parents will come and collect it soon, will come inside soon. And it's a real dilemma. This lovely, simple picture. It was a real dilemma. Very nice, um, simple sentence, a lot of effect here, and the author cho chooses to give a lot of attention to this 
this one little um, clause, this one sentence. And then we have a small advertisement on the last page of the paper. And we are reading in a way a newspaper here. So it's kind of like this is in a paper. Um, I don't actually think it's like that, but anyway, let's just go there. Here's the paper itself. The next morning, we called a tram into the city. Uh, let's read the paper. Are you finding that ordinary? Are you finding that the order the order of day-to-day -day life is unexpectedly disrupted by unclaimed property, objects without names, troublesome artifacts of unknown origin, filing cabinet leftovers, things that just don't belong? Don't panic. We've got a pigeonhole to stick it in. Love that pigeonhole. That again is like the working class. You, it's all you know. I put in my pigeonhole. It's a, it's a, it's a phenomenon that exists in all businesses. Everyone has a pigeonhole. If you're a worker, we'll just put it in the pigeonhole. Sweep, sweep us under the carpet. Sweep, sweep us under um carpet. So this is sort of a Latin reference here. Sweep it under the carpet. Ignore it. There's something different. Just bury it. Bury it. That's the advice we're sort of implicitly told and explicitly sometimes. Um, in the tall grey building number 357B. So very nice. So they embark on this mission to finally put this lost thing where it belongs. Uh, it certainly doesn't belong in the home. It doesn't belong in society or the community. Again, we're now talking um, as an external object, as we can see the thing in itself or uh, the object of itself. And we're also talking about the deeper layer of things that don't belong within us. And we are taught to push those things down in us and get rid of them. They caught a tram into the city. Yep. I mean, that picture says, it's all, says it all. Not one person is smiling. Uh, <laughs> is this person breathing in the smoke? No. Uh, it's just it's just the same. It's, it's a repetitious uh, people just marching, 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 marching. We have all these signs and instructions telling people what to do and where to go. They arrive at tall building number 357B or something like that. And yet yeah, definitely is tall. We arrived at a tall grey building with no windows. It was pretty dark in there and it smelt like disinfectant. I have a lost thing, I called to the receptionist at the front desk. Fill in those forms, she said. The lost thing made a small, sad noise. Small sad noise, nice. Good little noun phrase. Um, fill in those papers, look at the papers there. And here it is, it's recognizing that its owner, uh, temporary owner, uh, doesn't want it, doesn't want it, it wants to dispense of it. And even its own smoke is being filtered out of the building. It's like this is an unwanted object, an unwanted thing. I was looking around for a pen when I felt something tug at the back of my shirt. If you really care about the thing, you shouldn't leave it here, said a tiny voice. This is a place for forgetting, for forgetting, leaving behind, smoothing over. Here, take this. It was a business card with a kind of sign on it. It wasn't very important looking, but it did seem to point somewhere. Cheers, I said. So it has, um, that lovely arrow comes back into the, into the story and gives and is now giving direction before the arrows were giving ambivalent um, directions you didn't know what they exactly meant but there were signs pointing to something and then again this is another comment um, um, some could argue is that we're given at moments in our life certain signs but that can get lost in the in the um, the peer pressure of the community around us and people around us. Oh, I don't know if my camera is making that funny. Let me go right in. Hello. It can get lost in, in the day-to-day. -day. But sometimes, and I think this little janitor here, he's, he's I think, the magician archetype. Um, not the joker archetype, but he's the magician archetype. I think he appears at that moment in the story. And it's like the, the um, in Cinderella, it's the fairy godmother. That's this, That's the archetype coming through here. And the fairy godmother, and also in um, Yellow Brick Road. What is it? What is it? Yeah. Alice in Wonderland. No, although it does exist there as well. How annoying! This is a play that I was part of as well. Dorothy. 
that one. You know the one I'm talking about, the Wizard of Oz, the Wizard of Oz. And then the witch comes and says, uh, you need to tap your heels three times. The answer was always there, blah, 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 blah. blah. So that is, is coming through here. That energy is coming through in, in this um, janitor pro, uh, archetype. At this point, we left the tall gray building. Well, actually, sorry, to go back one, you, and you know this is, an, this is a magician archetype because at the moment in the story, he appears and says, you can go either way. You can get rid of this. What does it say? Um, this is a place of forgetting, leaving behind, smoothing over. Don't do this. Don't do that to this object or to your energy, which is emitting this. So these, that part of you, which is special, and unique, it's not for forgetting, leaving behind or smoothing over. There's a way to work with this There's a way to, to deal with it. At this point, we left the tall gray building and hunted all over the place for this sign. It wasn't an easy job. And I can't say I knew what it all meant. So they're going across the city. They're looking for that arrow. The thing is sort of playing with the birds and just doing its own thing. Here we have, this is, I don't even know how, this has got so many symbols. I have never noticed this before, but that's just a whole other video, I think. Um, here's the arrow over here. Then we have the arrow over here. We have that cloud thing happening that we saw before. That steam sort of snippet, comic snippet. Um, there we go. We're following the arrow. And then we have sort of like people marching, but also they're just buildings. And they're just all trying to go towards that direction. Eventually we found what seemed to be the right place in a dark little gap of some anonymous little street. The sort of place you'd never know existed unless you were actually looking for it. I pressed a buzzer on the wall and this big door opened up. So here they come, they arrive. There's the arrow pointing to the little switch. They press the switch and let's see what happens. It's good to do a little prediction here. What do you think might happen? I didn't want to think. I didn't know what to think, but the lost thing made an improving sort of noise. It seemed as good as time. It seemed a good a time as any to say goodbye to each other, so we did. In many stories, they would actually become friends. Uh, and this door opens up, and it's a land. It's a world full of strange and the ordin and the extraordinary. And it's all living here. And, you know, this could be the unconscious that when you go to sleep, the subconscious, I should say, that when you go to sleep, this is the dream world. It's extravagant there are things flying there are like oh, this is so many things going on here all these different characters and personalities oh then i went home to classify my bottle top collection so here he goes he's saying goodbye to his thing and he enters this world of the subconscious which i think is what um he's chosen the other way uh although the magician archetype said for, for it to go here i think He's chosen to push it down still, uh, in a way. Uh, I'm not going to go into that, actually, because I, don't, I haven't thought that through. Well, that's it. That's the story. Not especially profound, I know, but I never said it was. And don't ask me what the moral is. I mean, I can't say that the thing actually belonged in the place where it ended up. In fact, none of the things, that really, none of the things there really belonged. They all seemed happy enough, though. So maybe that didn't matter. I don't know. I still think about the lost thing from time to time, especially when I see something out of the corner of my eye that doesn't quite fit. You know, something with a weird, sad, lost sort of look. So, <clears throat> yeah, a uh, beautiful picture here. It's Everything's ordinary. He's not wearing a business shirt. That's different. Um, the road ahead is paved in gold. That could be a... What's that book again? Alice in Wonderland, no. <laughs> Paved in gold, the yellow brick road. I can't believe I'm doing this again. I won't go through that again. The Wizard of Oz. <laughs> Wizard of Oz. Um, I can't say that the thing actually belonged in the place where it ended up. I, I think that's really telling. It's really interesting because that's what I was saying before. The magician archetype appears, gives him a, a, say, uh, a place to say, no, this is where it should go. But the place where the lost thing ended up 
does feel like it was repressed um, because it was forgotten. Well, you assume it's forgotten, the door's closed and that's it. But maybe it's sort of a way of not destroying it, but placing it somewhere else where it still has life. That could be much more of the, the meaning behind that. Um, so yeah, maybe, maybe that could be it. Don't ask me what the moral is. I like that. <laughs> um, seems very postmodern, this book. Existential. Here's another arrow, another arrow. And the little lost thing is there. No, everyone's too busy to actually look and be bothered what this thing is, or they don't really care. I see this sort of thing less and less these days, though. Maybe there aren't any many lost. Maybe there aren't many lost things around anymore, or maybe I've just stopped noticing them. Too busy doing other stuff, I guess. That's the end of the book. So we have that uh, those time pictures again. Here he's in the train, thinking. There's three trains, one of many. There's no difference anymore. One of many just becomes lost in a in a world of of transport here. But that just looks like a building. It looks like um pattern that's what he's reduced down to knowledge studies others wisdom is self-known hmm. i think that could be on purpose that with thanks to helen campbell and chris there so here's the there's the um magician archetype i'm arguing but again this is a comment on him getting older and his openness to strange things his care to strange things is reducing more and more it's actually getting cemented um his, e his ego is cementing is that would that be accurate his his perspective is 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 shrinking and short shortening and therefore he's getting lost in in everyone else's into a collective way of thinking rather than his own unique way of thinking and i think that is the moral it's to sort of keep your eyes open um always be curious be brave, take risks, rather than reduce yourself to, overly reduce yourself to the horde and the community around you, which is very important, don't get me wrong. But this, I think, is a real teaching on the older you get, the less special things there are in in your world, the harder it is to find. Yes. All right, I'll leave it at that. A very good book. Um, so much can come out of this. I mean, you can cut the picture out children can do pictures and write their own books there's just so much going on here i mean if i was going to teach this again i would get rid of all these rectangles make them blank and get a child to fill that in and tell a story through pictures only using one or two sentences i think that would be a fantastic task absolutely amazing task because the child can represent time through images and and try and sum it up in in one sentence but that, there's many ideas to this, which, but yeah, I mean, I'm more interested in the, the, the bigger themes and the stories. Um, yes. Okay. The Lost Thing by Sean Tan. Enjoy.